my thoughts on the Final Four and FSU not making the national championship. Number one, let's go over what the rules actually are, okay? We didn't write the rules, neither did you, neither did the fans, neither did nobody else. Do we agree with them? No, we don't. But do we agree with any rules in life? No. Um, but they're the rules. Do I think I should get a ticket for going five miles an hour in the speed, over in the speed limit? No, but they're rules. I knew better. So, number one, conference champion. There's only four spots. I guess we got power five. Does that leave everyone else out too? Okay. Number two, strength of schedule. Well, I think we all know the strength of schedule. Okay. I don't, there is no argument outside of one team schedule either. We don't want to hear the ACC beat this many SEC team schedule because none of that matters right now. Now, head-to-head -head competition. I think we know how that works. That, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Comparative outcomes of common opponents. Well, they didn't have any of those because one particular team didn't hardly play anybody. And other, number four, possibly the most important factor here, other relevant factors such as unavailable key players and coaches that may have affected a team's performance during the season or likely will affect the postseason performance. I don't know. Last time I checked, there was fans saying that 80% of the team was Jordan Travis, which I 100% disagree with. I don't think that's right at all. I think the defense did mostly everything, but you got to score points. So you got to beat these lowercase teams by 50 or 60 points, which I don't know, kind of didn't happen. Um, now, FSU coaching staff, they want to blame everyone but themselves. They were blaming, I mean, seconds, blaming everybody, blaming the NCAA, blaming the ACC. Well, who's to blame for getting their potential Heisman Trophy winner hurt? The sixth-year senior, Jordan Travis, hurt versus who? North Alabama. What was the score when he got hurt? What quarter was it? I don't know. Was Jordan Travis actually that good? I thought he was pretty decent. And at the beginning of the season when they played LSU, who was now number 13 or 15 or whatever they are, with three losses, they looked like one of the top teams in the country. But without their offensive line, without some key players, it's in the rules. The fans don't get to write the rules, and neither do I. It's the rules. Now, Jordan Travis, six-year senior, is older than five starting quarterbacks in the NFL and the same age as three. As a matter of fact, he's the same age as the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars who's been starting there for three years. Hmm, let's play him against North Alabama. Maybe we can get a Heisman and a national championship. That brings me to the FSU Athletic Department. They're not to blame either. Why not? Because the AD, Michael Afford, released a statement within seconds. Seconds, which tells you what. We'll get to that. And the ACC Commissioner, Jim Phillips, two years ago, defiantly declared the ACC was firmly opposed to an 8-12 to 12 team playoff. We're not opposed to expansion at some point right now. But, but right now, we don't feel like that's the right thing to do in college football. They tried to buy their way in. I don't care what you say. They tried to buy their way in. They're not the only team that's done it, but they tried to buy their way in, and it didn't work. It backfired. Wouldn't be an issue, would it? Everybody else has got a 12-team playoff. Why didn't they want it? They wanted to buy their way in. Now, let's speak, let's speak of the past here. 1993, FSU, national champion amazing team, maybe the greatest team in FSU history. Um, they beat Nebraska. Who'd they lose to that year? Oh, yeah, that's right. They lost to Notre Dame. But FSU had one of the toughest schedules, if you go back and look, ever. Okay? Now, Nebraska was undefeated. Who else was undefeated that year? West Virginia, right? West Virginia had a tough schedule that year. Did West Virginia deserve to be left out? I, I don't want to hear this all this stuff was not around back then. No. 
nonsense. You don't get to play both sides of the fence for yourself. You don't get to choose and pick and choose what's best for you. It doesn't work that way. Now, and while we're talking about it, 2004, Auburn. Were they undefeated? 13-0, SEC champs. They beat everyone pretty darn good that year. Won the SEC championship pretty sound versus Tennessee. Hmm, is it SEC bias? I don't know because USC played Oklahoma for the national title that year and beat them by 50,000 points. I think Auburn would have had a shot. Now, the CFP committee is made up of one SEC member, one Mountain West member, one American Coastal member, one Atlantic Coastal, one Pac-12 member, two Big Ten members, one Mid-American member, one Big 12 member, two, two ACC members, one HBCU member, and one sports writer with ties to the Big Ten and a division number of schools. The selection committee chair is affiliated with the ACC and West Point. Hmm. You're going to blame the SEC? You're going to blame Bama? You're going to blame Nick Saban? Paid his way, bought his way in when FSU's payroll is higher than any NFL team right now for one year? And Washington? You're going to blame them? You're going to blame Georgia? You're going to blame everyone else but yourselves? I'm not saying fans blame yourselves. I'm not saying the players blame themselves. I'm saying the coaching staff and that crap of athletic department. Now, conspiracy theory. My opinion. I don't care what you think because it's my opinion. If you don't like it, take these two and shove it. You know where to go. Right between it. Now, conspiracy theory. Now, wait a minute. FSU, they already knew they weren't going to make it. When that little twerp, little pencil neck geek was jumping around on the sideline after the Louisville game, like they had just won the national title, jumping up on everybody. Everybody's like, why are you jumping up on us, dude? Looking like a fool again. He knew. They knew. They all knew they weren't going. I'm sorry you fans had to be screwed. I'm sorry they had to fool you because you guys are pretty darn good fans and you're pretty passionate about some really stupid stuff like college football. College football's a joke. I've been telling you since the beginning of the season. And who was the only one in the beginning of the season after the first game that said FSU would go undefeated? This guy. Not y'all. This guy did. And it happened. Now, with that being said, congratulations to the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Congratulations, Michigan. Go Blue. Congratulations, Washington. Whatever it is you guys say. Congratulations, Texas. Hook them horns. The only team, in my opinion, that got screwed was the University of Georgia. And if they would have had an 8-12 to 12 team playoff, we wouldn't be talking about this, would we? Now, the only thing FSU has to do is what? Say, make me shove my foot in my mouth, and I will come on here and apologize and say, go Knowles. All you got to do is beat Georgia. Shouldn't be a problem. You're one of the best teams in the country, right? You deserve to be in the Final Four, right? You deserve your shot. You went undefeated. I mean, you went undefeated. What team doesn't make it that's undefeated, you know? There's been quite a few. But what team doesn't make it, man? Blah, blah, blah. Heard all your arguments. All you got to do is beat Georgia. It's that simple. We can get you a sign just like UCF did. Hey, best luck to you. Go dogs. Go Knowles.